Seabed warfare has become one of the critical areas that navies are looking at to defend in the future. To do this requires a massive network of underwater sensors. And I'm joined here today by Sean Trevethan, who's leading the Digital Ocean Project, looking at how best to do this going forward. Sean, welcome to Navy Tech. Great to see you. Thank you very much, Harry. Good to be here. Sean, let's start by asking you, I mean, seabed warfare, we've heard a lot about it today. It's on a lot of Navy's mind. Is this going to be the future battle space? Um, well, it's certainly uh, one that's received a, a lot of attention since the Nord Stream incident. Uh, and therefore, with political attention, comes a, a hyper-focus of, of navies. And there is an argument to say that um, many navies have operated uh, in this sphere of warfare for many years, doing different types of tasks. And so, so what is this digital concept then that you're, you're bringing to, to as a potential solution and what impact might it have on Navy tech? Well, certainly the protection of critical, critical undersea infrastructure is going to be hopefully a benefit of delivering on NATO's digital ocean vision. The, um, the, the key value proposition for the digital ocean vision is the fact that we don't have to use expensive and exquisite warships, submarines or aircraft to cover the entire area of operations for NATO in terms of situational awareness. There are technologies already out there that we could exploit at pace and connect together and give us a raised uh, level of situational awareness in the maritime domain. So we can use our more expensive assets for high-end warfighting, you know, as directed by, by nations and those operational commanders. Could, because today we've heard several presentations talking about one of those technological options being undersea fibre optic cables. Is this seen as a, an adequate form of protection? Because some of our Navy commanders out there didn't agree. Well, um, adequate form of protection overall? Probably no. And I say that because in terms of situational awareness, when you want to protect critical undersea infrastructure, 80 to 90 percent of those attacks are going to come from the surface so really um, you need to focus on your situational awareness on the surface on the sea surface first and foremost now the digital ocean vision is about enhanced situational awareness from seabed to space and it's about connecting those sensors uh, into a, a common uh, and fused operating picture that can provide an enhanced level of situational awareness to, uh, to NATO and allies. And, and how involved is, it, is industry with this at the moment? Is this a, a concept stage that militaries are looking at with a view to going out to industry or have they been embedded from the start to help this process? Um, we are at the start of the process and we are, I say we, um, you know, uh, my, my team at NATO and the, the community uh, in which I coordinate are of, under no illusion that we absolutely need industry involved from the outset. Uh, not only industry, but also academia as well. You, you, um, I think people today talked about uh, triple helix being a, a, a buzzword. Uh, and it is, it is a buzzword, but we're not going to get there unless everybody's involved. Um, we are hosting uh, an initial industry symposium on the digital ocean at NATO headquarters on the 16th and 17th of April. It's, uh, it's open and gone out uh, to all allied and partners industries uh, and we hope to have a, a really good attendance and a really good conversation with industry in terms of explaining our problem sets and trying to ascertain what their potential solutions are, even if um, they're not a complete solution, which we know that will be the case uh, for many, we want to know where the potential, um, where the most likely uh, and potential solutions will be in order to invest further effort, resource and, and development. Does that link to the cross-reference of the Allied intelligence picture which you were talking about, intelligence? Yes, so when we talk about cross-referencing cross with the Allied intelligence picture, I think the digital ocean will take situational and will enhance situational awareness to a point um, where 
hopefully an operational commander will know whether he or she has to deploy conventional force elements to go and deal with the situation. Now, in order to rapidly expand the DigitalOcean digital network, it's envisaged that we will be operating in the large part on an unclass uh, side uh, in, involving potentially uh, research vessels, potentially merchant vessels, potentially um, assets that don't belong to us that might be sending some data that could provide you, that, that could be useful into a, into a, a common operating picture that would be unclassified until it is cross-referenced with the Allied intelligence picture because what might mean nothing to a civilian organization um, we might have some intelligence to indicate that that event is actually significant and we need to pay attention as an alliance and do something about it. Excellent. Thank you very much. Sean, great to speak to you today. Best of luck with Digital Ocean and enjoy the rest of your time here at Navy Tech. Brilliant. Thanks, Harry. Thanks for having me.